Good morning, Magandang Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. You're probably wondering, James, where have you been lately? <laughs> well, I've actually been here kind of entertaining my grandchildren and uh, taking care of some things around the house. I have not been idle, but I have not forgotten about you guys out there. And several of you have not allowed me to forget about you because I keep getting some emails from folks that keep saying things like, oh, I keep having to watch your videos multiple times over and over again, waiting on a new video to be uploaded. Well, rest assured, there will be some new videos uploaded uh, here in the near future. Uh, but I, like I said, I have not been idle here. Uh, I've been working on projects, getting ready to send things back to the Philippines so that we can start our project back there as well. Uh, today, as a matter of fact, case in point is we have uh, LBC stopping by. We have one uh, oversized uh, ballot buying box that is being shipped out today, so it should be there closely around the time that I arrive back in the Philippines and it has some critical components that I need uh, to work on the yard. Uh, I have some things like irrigation uh, parts inside there to put down a self-sustaining irrigation system like the one we have here in the US. I think it's kind of difficult to find some of those parts in the Philippines so I'm shipping those over. Uh, What's the lawnmower? I like the lawnmowers that they offer here in the U.S. as opposed to some of the lawnmowers that are available at the big box stores like Wilcon and CW. Uh, so I ship one of those back as well. Or we'll be shipping one of those back as well. Uh, uh, also, on the forefront for the Koi Pond project, although the Koi Pond project here is almost into conclusion, uh, we are going to build that Koi Pond project on the back of Villa Feliz and a lot of the parts I cannot get over in the Philippines to make it the way that I would like it. So, I have been doing some engineering and I've been putting together some parts uh, for some of the technical solution for that koi pond and I will share that with you uh, here very soon, maybe even today. So anyway, I am gonna go ahead and uh, get today started and uh, I have to go pick up my grandchildren just a little bit but we'll add some more to today's video. So before the storm arrives here, which in other words is another name for grandchildren, uh, we're going to get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Good. I think that was your ABCs, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was very good. Exciting. I think that at school, right? Did you learn that at school? Yeah. Ah, they, yes. they did. We have to put the banana plants in a different part of the yard, okay? Oh, look at this guy coming out of the ground. So we're going to move him. Move him. We're going to move him to a better place. Yeah? Let's move these guys. They don't need to be here. Okay? I'll do that. You want to do it? Here, you pull down on this. Pull down. Pull. Oh. A little harder. Whoa! Whoa! Okay. That's number two banana plant. One more. One more. She's helping tap on. She helped me. Oh my god. You know what she did? Yeah. She helped me prune. Okay. Well, I got the grandkids here. I always take the grandkids out and we kind of work on things together. Uh, we're working on transplanting some banana plants uh, to back behind the koi pond area. And, and there's some other projects that I'm working on. Right now they're having fun with uh, their Lola and they're over there playing. So we're not gonna bother them right now, but I just wanted to show you the development, what's happening with the koi pond area right here. So you can kind of see, uh, we are changing a little bit of the way the, uh, the plant dynamics are back here. I didn't like the bamboo, and that's the great thing about having a garden. Uh, a garden is personal to the way you want to put it together. So I'm trying a couple of different things. Uh, right now, 
Uh, remember we put the maple tree there, the very, the bonsai looking type of a uh, uh, maple tree. I've got some plants inside here. I have uh, the uh, banana plants that uh, my granddaughter helped me move over here. Also, I want to show you the project. It's not complete. I don't have all the parts in, but I want to show you something. You know, sometimes when you buy stuff online, uh, you don't realize how easy it is to fabricate the same stuff yourself. Uh, most people don't want to do it because it's a hassle, but sometimes when prices become prohibitive, like the price of this settlement tank right here. You see this settlement tank right here. This is a very expensive, uh, this is a very expensive settlement tank. So anyway, uh, and this is life with grandchildren. So what I was talking about was you can actually build these things yourself and you can save lots and lots of money. And case in point is what I am putting together right now uh, for our cord pond in the Philippines. I want to build a settlement tank very much similar to the one we have here at our house here uh, in Charleston, South Carolina. But the settlement tank that I want to build uh, I want to change, I want to do a change up and I want to do an improvement on it. So first I have to do, it, well first I have to do is keep a grandchild from falling into the, uh, here. Oh, yeah. Matt, let's get down, I don't want you to fall into the pond. <laughs> so anyway, what we are trying to do here is uh, uh, come up with a solution, a settlement tank solution that's an improvement upon this tank right here the settlement tank right here so i want an improvement and why do i want an improvement on this tank right here is this this tank is missing a critical feature uh that they allowed to go out the door without doing the feature on there and what the tank needs it needs a washout there's an input that comes from the bottom of the pond it goes through a four inch pipe with a knife valve. There's a knife valve inside here so that when you do cleaning you can shove the water so you don't drain the pond when you're doing the cleaning of your settlement tank. And therein lies the problem when I say cleaning and I'll talk about that in just a minute. This little basket. That little basket right there and that's what goes to your pump in your life support system. Well, and the reason all that, that filter material inside here that keeps all the debris so you keep your pump nice and clean and it does what it needs to do. It pumps water to the it pumps water to the waterfall. <laughs> so, but it's missing a critical feature. And I found that out the first time I went to clean uh, the settlement tank. And it's missing a clean out. Uh, so we need a third pipe that goes to the very bottom. Because what happens when you want to clean this settlement tank out, you take all the filter basket out, you wash all that material off, but all that water is filthy that's inside there. It's got all the fish waste inside there and any sand or debris that gets sucked into the bottom filter. Uh, so I did some research on Google and I saw some other designs and it would have only taken one more pipe to integrate, a basically a two inch pipe at the very bottom of this so that when you do the clean, the cleaning of the settlement tank, you shut off the input, which is from the drain using the knife valve there. You turn off your uh, valve inside the life support system inside there. And that's that diverter valve I showed you when I put it in there. So you isolate both sides. And then if you have one more pipe at the very bottom, you can drain all the water. You just open that up with another knife valve. You get a two inch knife valve for a two inch pipe. You let it all drain out. All the dirty water and waste goes out. Then you go back and then you close you close that off, you put the water back inside there, you backfill, you open up the, uh, the valve going to the pond, you open up the diverter valve and the life support, and then you're back in business again. So anyway, let me show you the parts that I secured for that. And they were easy, they were all what's called cots. In the uh, integration world, in the commercial world, when you're building something, cots, C-O-T-S, commercial off the shelf. So I was able to find everything online that makes this settlement tank over here. And, I, and you can, like I said, you can build it at a fraction of the cost. Uh, those balls inside the pond are not for the fish. Uh, that's the grandchildren having fun out here with the, uh, with the pond. Anyway, uh, with Lola taking care of the grandkids out in the front yard right now, it's a little bit more quiet back here. So we can talk about the original things that I wanted to talk about today. And that's how you can save a lot of money if you are building a project. And it doesn't matter whether it's a koi pond, whether it's a gazebo, whether it's working on your car. Uh, it, sometimes you have to think outside the box. Remember I talked about thinking outside the box when we were building Villa Feliz. Well, what I'm talking about thinking out the box right now is ba basically 
building uh, your own project based upon existing technology. When you look at the components that make up a settlement tank, uh, it's actually a lot of simple parts. And, and when I talk about saving money, uh, I will show you how you can save a lot of money to build something like this. Well, anyway, this is, this is our settlement tank. You remember this. This is what takes the waste from the bottom filter inside the koi pond over here. goes through a four inch pipe uh, and then it ends up in the bottom of this tank right here. That's where all the fish waste goes and it settles to the bottom, hence the name settlement tank. Uh, se settlement tank, chamber, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, the, the core components of this are very simple. I didn't realize how simple they are. And you, you can build one of these things yourself and save tons of money. Uh, you see this basket in here. That, that basket is what holds some of the filter material. And then in the center, there's just a basket inside there. It's a drain basket so that none of the leaves go inside there. Uh, to, into your pump inside, none of the debris or anything like that. It keeps uh, everything uh, from damaging your pump and your life support system. I looked at all the core components on here and I said, wow, I can, I can buy most of these off the shelf. Well, I can buy all of these uh, cots uh, commercial off the shelf. So I just did a little bit of research on Google and I found most of the things I need. I, I don't have all the parts, but I'm gonna share with you what I picked up today already. So anyway, the basket, the main basket that's inside there is a basket like this right here. It is exactly this basket right here. This is an AP30. Uh, AP30 made by a, by a company called Nursery Supplies Inc. And what they do, and this isn't even for a pond. This is not for aquatic. This is agriculture. This is what you use uh, to, if you have a, a plant nursery and you're selling on a commercial scale, uh, you get a bunch of these things and you put them out inside your garden. And what they, they, they are a very healthy way of growing plants that don't allow your plant roots to get root bound. You know, in a typical container, like these containers over here. When you plant inside here, the roots have nowhere to go. So what they do is they start wrapping around and around inside and they become what's called root bound. Uh, it's not quite the healthiest way of growing plants. It will stunt the growth of the plant and it's, and it's, it's really not that healthy for your plant. But these accelerators right here, uh, when you plant them inside here, uh, they, the roots actually come out through these these horizontal uh, slits on the side of this container right here and then when you're ready to sell them they grow very quick they spread out a little bit you trim off the outside and you have a plant that grows at a more rapid pace and healthier pace than a standard one so anyway that's what we're using for the, one of the core components inside the settlement tank uh, remember your settlement tank is a chamber it's one of these baskets and it's some pipes and adapters and all so I found pretty much everything, uh, and I sourced most of the things inside here. Uh, you will see this is made for RV sewer pipes inside here. It is a oh, uh, it is a, it's a little bayonet connector on here, and it's a four-inch pipe with a flange and all inside here. So what we're going to do as soon as all the parts come in, I'm still waiting on the basket that goes in the top. Basically, this sets down inside here we'll put a small four inch pipe extender inside there which is this right here and then you take this material right here which is i believe i don't know if this is abs or polyethylene i'm not really sure what the, what the make of this is right here remember we're not under pressure so it's not a big deal for gluing these parts together inside here this will fit inside and on the top of the basket goes which is that basket in the very top that takes everything over to your pump inside your uh, uh, life support system and that little basket on the top it's just like another filter so no big pieces of debris gets inside there then on the bottom on, underneath the bottom of this right here this will connect to a, uh, a four inch pipe the four inch pipe that comes from the bottom of your pond so we just save tons of money on all you have to do you have and you have to invest in a three inch uh, circular cutter right here you cut the hole out you put it all together and then you have a solution now the only other thing this does not have is the the, ch the chamber that's on the outside now you can do what you want we are going to build the outside chamber in uh, our build in the philippines we're, we're probably going to build that out of concrete so that will be the outside chamber it will be slanted down and we will put a two inch clean out pipe in the bottom of it which this one does not it was a fault 
fault, I believe, in uh, the technical solution for the engineering of this product over here. Because the first time I had to clean this out, I realized, oh, all this water sits up in the bottom. How do I get the water out? I can shut off both ends from water, water from, from the knife valve uh, going into it, from the, uh, what is it, the uh, diverter valve inside the life support. So both sides are shut off so the water won't go up or down but I have no way of getting the water out. I put a little sump pump inside there, but there's still about this much water inside there. So there needs to have a clean out. To make that a perfect settlement chamber, least amount of maintenance, there needs to be a, uh, a clean out in the very bottom. So that's a third port that we will put in our concrete uh, chamber solution and our uh, koi pond at Villa Feliz. And I will show you one more thing. I don't have all the parts in. Uh, these, these are TPR jets right here. See, it's still in the bag. Uh, I'm gonna leave them in the bag right now because these are going to the Philippines. Uh, and, but these are what you put. They, they're, you see it's on angle. So when you have water, that's what causes the circular motion inside the deep part of your pond. I'm gonna put one on both sides of the pond in the deep section at Ville Feliz and our Koi Pond. And that's what assists putting the waste down into the bottom drain. So anyway, uh, once I get all the parts here, we'll start doing some assembly, uh, not finished assembly because it won't fit inside the box with all the pipes and all hooked onto it. And I'll show you that that will be a project for another day. Well, that's about it. That I wanted to do an update, a short update on what's been going on here. Again, what's been going on is I've been ordering parts for things that are gonna be going to uh, uh, the Philippines, to Villa Feliz for our continued build there. Uh, I've got the grandkids that are visiting. I have, let's see, still working a little bits and pieces on things around the yard and the koi pond. And, oh, our first ballot buying box left today. The agent came and he picked up the box and that's headed to the Philippines, and I think it takes, oh, uh, it's going to be a couple months before that gets there. So I will beat that package before it gets there, but I have several other packages that need to go, and that was through LBC. We'll see. We'll do a full review once the stuff arrive in the Philippines to see uh, uh, if everything arrives safe, sound, and uh, not damaged. Uh, that was a pretty easy task for that. Other than that, uh, there's really not a whole lot else that's going on right now. Again, a lot of the preparation, uh, taking care of things here at the, at the house here in the U.S. and prepping everything up for shipping over to the Philippines. As soon as I get back to the Philippines, the, the construction process is going to begin again. Remember, we still have multiple things that need to be done to finish the house. We still have two CRs that are incomplete. One that's only in about a 50% state and one that needs some plumbing hooked up. We need some glass inside there, hook up the, uh, the some of the plumbing. Some of the plumbing isn't completed, some grouting and things like that. Also, a lot of stuff on the outside. The fencing isn't complete on the outside and uh, the planters need to be completed. Some of the steps going to the backyard, but I will tell you, uh, the grass is growing like crazy. So it's definitely gonna need a major cut when I get back. Uh, the blue grass is starting to look really beautiful. Also, I would like to sincerely thank all of you who have been hanging in there with this U.S. edition of Villa Feliz. Although Villa Feliz is our home in the Philippines, uh, we are here in the U.S. on vacation doing all those necessary things, you know, the necessary things like taxes and maintenance and family and things like that. So that's all getting taken in. But I want to thank all of you who, who have transitioned from our Philippine adventure over to the U.S. adventure. And until I head back across the pond, back over to the build over in the Philippines, uh, I will continue to do updates on what's going on here with the projects that we have here. There still are several projects that need to be done and I will more than gladly share those with you. I also am receiving several questions from subscribers about some of the things that we used for our build in the Philippines. I don't have all of the information at, at hand with me here. A lot of the stuff is still back over in the Philippines. Uh, so if you don't go back and review some of the videos for some of the hardware we use, some of the techniques that we use or something like that, uh, if you again will ask the question once I get back uh, to the Philippines, I will gladly respond to those questions uh, and try to answer as 
as many of those questions as possible. Uh, thank you for hanging in there. So I am going to close for today. Uh, let me go see if I can find Ness so we will close out today's video together. Oh, that is beautiful. Ah, princess. Oh, that's... Oh, Cinderella. So something I wanted to show you real quick before I close for today is one of the things is we have the Sago. Uh, remember the Sago uh, that we thought was dead, but it was producing, I think I pulled off 45 to 50 of the little baby uh, Sago plants on the very bottom. Let me show you what we're doing with those. We're repropagating those around the yard. So you see right here, you see the Sago right here. You see the Sago right here. Those are from the bottom and I have I have them in many places all around I hate to throw them away because they're such beautiful palms and I, I gave some of them away to some of the neighbors and uh, I will continue uh, to, to play around with the sagos I wish also and one other thing before I close today is pups remember uh, the pups from uh, Hapon and Mary Ann uh, two of them have found foster homes. They are in good hands right now. As a matter of fact, one of them is going to school, believe it or not. Uh, Sean Pascali, uh, one of our longtime subscribers who took one of the pups, he is sending mm, Flavor is the name of that pup. And Flavor is, go I think today was his first day or yesterday or tomorrow is his first day in the special school for rescue or something like that. We still have two pups out of five left. So if you are interested in a pup, get with me. Uh, if you are in the Batangas area or you are willing to travel to the Batangas area, let me know. We have two left. Uh, there are three there, but one of them is a uh, promise to our gardener. But our gardener said that he will take whichever is left out of the three. Uh, so we have two more. So again, either PM me or send me an email or just make a comment on uh, the vlog here and I will uh, do my best to contact you, you and we will start working adoption. So anyway, I wanna thank Ness for taking charge of the grandkids so I can sit and talk to you for a few minutes about the projects that are going on here uh, over the last couple of weeks. Let's go ahead and close for today. Uh, as, you, as you notice, these are projects after projects after projects that are going on here, and we will continue to update you with what's going here until I head back and start the big project again back over in the Philippines. So, if you enjoyed today's video, again, as short as it may be, <laughs> if you enjoyed it and you found it interesting and you found it uh, amusing, uh, please give us a thumbs up please share and if you have not subscribed just click on that little my pi dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen over there you'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time we upload a new video so until such time you have a wonderful and blessed day